Welcome to the Book of Mormon. This is Dr. D. Todd Harrison, your instructor today, as we feast upon the words of Jesus Christ through the Book of Mormon. I uh, pray that uh, God continues to bless all of you at this time in our lives and with all that the world is uh, facing this day in this uh, April month of 2020. And I trust that uh, as you continue to pray to your Heavenly Father for uh, safety and for deliverance, He will deliver you. And he'll always stands ready to uh, forgive you of your sins and bless you with his spirit. And I testify that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the, the Redeemer, our Lord and our God. And that as we continue to feast upon his words, we'll be able to entertain his spirit uh, with us in our lives. And we'll find joy and happiness in, in this uh, life. Uh, today we'll look at the King Benjamin speech. Uh, we started this last week in Mosiah chapters 1 through 3. Today we're looking at Mosiah chapter 4 through 6. And what we will read here is, uh, we'll first finalize the chapter 3, and in verses uh, uh, 24 through 27, he says, And thus saith the Lord, They shall stand as a bright testimony against this people at the judgment day. Wherefore they shall be judged, every man according to his works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. And if they be evil, they are consigned to an awful view of their own guilt and abominations, which doth cause them to shrink from the presence of the Lord into a state of misery and endless torment, from whence they can no more return. Therefore they have drunk damnation to their own souls. And that's the danger of, of the, not keeping the commandments in your life. When you're brought before the judgment seat of God and brought to God's presence, you will feel all this awful guilt and the, and the wicked consciousness. And it will you won't feel worthy. You won't feel comfortable to be in God's presence. You will gladly want to leave God's presence to go where you would feel comfortable. And he says here next, they, therefore they have drunk out of the cup of the wrath of God. Now notice it's, it's they themselves are punishing themselves. It's not God uh, pouring out some wrath upon them. It's that they can't stand to be in the presence of God due to this wicked uh, consciousness that they have and the remembrance of all their guilt. Which justice could no more deny unto them than it could deny that Adam should fall because it was partaken in the forbidden fruit. Therefore mercy could have no claim on them forever. And their torment is as a lake of fire and brimstone, whose flames are unquenchable, and his smoke ascendeth up forever and ever. Thus hath the Lord commanded me. Amen. So that's the first part of King Benjamin's speech. And we're going to say this is such a powerful speech that look what happens here in, uh, in, in verse 1 through 2 of chapter 4. Now it came to pass that when Benjamin had made an end of speaking the words which had been delivered unto him by the angel of the Lord, that he cast his eyes round about on the multitude. And behold, they had fallen to the earth, for the fear of the Lord had come upon them. After King Benjamin tried to shake them and wake them up to their sins and the knowledge of their wickedness and abominations, they've all now fallen to the earth, or they were afraid of the Lord. And this fear of the Lord to come upon them. And they had viewed themselves in their own carnal state, even less than the dust of the earth. And they all cried aloud with one voice, saying, O oh, have mercy, and apply the atoning blood of Christ, that we may receive forgiveness of our sins, and our hearts may be purified. For we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who created heaven and earth and all things, who shall come down among the children of men. In verse 3, and it came to pass that after they had spoken these words, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. And they were what? Filled with joy. When you repent of your sins, you are filled with this joy that the Scriptures continue to talk about. Having received the remission of their sins and having peace of consciousness because of the exceeding faith which they had in Jesus Christ, who should come according to the words which King Benjamin had spoken unto them. So, Again, the forgiveness of sins is, is you have to have faith that Jesus Christ really will and has forgiven you of your sins in order to obtain this great gift of mercy. Uh, we'll look next at uh, verse 6 uh, through 9. I say unto you, if you have come to a knowledge of the goodness of God and His matchless power and His wisdom and His patience 
and his long suffering towards the children of men. He gives us many, many opportunities. Before God's judgments are ever poured out upon the earth, he's given us multiple upon multiple upon multiple opportunities. So his patience and his long suffering towards the children of men. And also the atonement which has been prepared from the foundation of the world, that thereby salvation might come unto him that should put his trust in the Lord and should be diligent in keeping his commandments and continue in the faith even unto the end of his life. I mean the life of the mortal body. And we know that Jesus Christ was this uh, uh, lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. It was our Heavenly Father's plan and purpose to, that, uh, to bring forth the Savior, Jesus Christ, in the meridian of time to come to the earth and to atone for our sins by suffering through the Garden of Gethsemane and dying upon the cross. And because of that, we can all receive forgiveness of our sins. And I testify that Jesus was the Savior, that he did uh, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and set up his church. And he pr proudly proclaimed the Father to the people and taught of the Father's ways. And he worked out this infinite and eternal atonement on, on behalf of us so that we can all return to live with him one day if we so qualify ourselves by keeping the commandments and uh, receiving and repenting of our sins. I say that this is the man who receiveth salvation through the atonement which was prepared from the foundation of the world for all mankind, whichever, whichever were since the fall of Adam or who are or who ever shall be until the end of the world. And this is the means whereby salvation cometh. And there is none other salvation save this which has been spoken of. Neither are there any conditions whereby man can be saved except the conditions which I have told you. There is no other way back to the Father's presence than by keeping His commandments and re repenting of, of our sins. Believe in God. Believe that He is and that He created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that he has all wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that man doth not comprehend all the things what the Lord can comprehend. His ways are higher than our ways. His intelligence is higher than our intelligence. You know, there's a principle that all intelligence are more intelligent than the other until they come to I, God. You know, I am more intelligent than they all, as we read in the scriptures. Uh, let's look now at 10 through 12. And again, believe that ye must repent of your sins and forsake them and humble yourselves before God and ask in sincerity of heart that he will forgive you. And now if you believe these things, see that ye do them. And again I say unto you as I've said before, that as ye have come to the knowledge of the glory of God or if you've known of his goodness and have tasted of his love and received the remission of your sins, which causes such great exceeding joy in your souls, even so I would that ye should remember and always retain in remembrance the greatness of God and your own nothingness and his goodness and long suffering towards you, unworthy creatures, and humble yourselves even in the depths of humility, calling on the name of the Lord daily. How often should we repent? Daily. And standing steadfastly in the faith of that which is to come, which was spoken by the mouth of the angel. And behold, I say unto you that if ye do this, ye shall always, re be, always rejoice and be filled with the love of God and always retain a remission of your sins. How great would that be to always retain a remission of our sins, right? And ye shall grow in the knowledge of the glory of him that created you or in the knowledge of that which is just and true. And ye will not have a mind to injure one another, but to live peacefully and to render to every man according to that which is his due. Says here, and you will not suffer your children that they go hungry or naked. You'll be good parents and take care of your children. Neither will you suffer that they transgress the laws of God. It's important that we teach our children from the day they're born, you know, that God exists, that Jesus is the Messiah, and that we need to learn to repent of our sins and to study his daily word through the scriptures. And, and that you don't fight and quarrel one with another and serve the devil who is the master of sin or is the evil spirit which has been spoken by our fathers, he being an enemy to all righteousness. But you will teach them to walk in the ways of truth and sovereignness. 
you will teach them to love one another and to serve one another. And also you yourselves were, will succor those that stand in need of your succor, and you will minister your substance unto him that standeth in need. And you will not suffer that the beggar put of this petition to you in vain, and turn him out to perish. Perhaps thou shalt say that this beggar has brought upon himself this misery, that perhaps he, it's his fault that he didn't go to school, or he didn't work hard enough in school, or he didn't get the right job, or he didn't, uh, you, you know, there's lots of things that we often will say, you know, in the, in the hu human nature to the, tend to think that the beggar, that you know, it's his fault that he's like that. We don't know what that person went through in his life. We don't know what the opportunities he or she may have had. And so it's sort of important here as he's teaching here that we freely give our substance to all those who, who are, are in, in uh, need. But I say unto you in 18 here, O man, whosoever doeth this the same hath great cause to repent, and except he repenteth that which he hath done, he perisheth forever. And he hath no interest in the kingdom of God. For behold, are we not all beggars? Do we not all depend upon the same being even God for all the substances we have, for both food and raiment, and for gold, and for silver, and for all the riches which he have of every kind? Right? We're all beggars to God. We depend upon him for our very breath, and for the air we breathe, and the, you know, and the, our physical bodies. Absolutely everything in this earth comes from God, and we're beggars uh, for him. And, and uh, therefore, since we beg on God to give us daily breath just to live each day, you know, so likewise we ought to take care of the beggars. He says here in uh, uh, verse 20, And behold, even at this time you have been calling on his name and begging for remission of your sins, right? We beg him for to forgive us of our sins, or, or we, we know the alternative. If we don't get, uh, if we don't receive forgiveness, of so what happens? We'll be subject to that devil, who's the enemy of all uh, righteousness. And he has suffered that ye have begged in vain. Nay, he has poured out his spirit upon you, and has caused that your heart should be filled with joy, and has caused that your mouth should be stopped, that you could not find utterance. So exceedingly great was your joy. And now if God who has created you, on whom you are dependent for your lives and for all that ye have and are, doth grant unto you whatsoever ye ask that, uh, that is right in faith, believing that ye shall receive, all that how ye ought to impart of the substance that ye have one to another. He says then here in verse 24, now what happens if, if you don't have any money? You don't have, you know, you barely survive in yourselves. Well, look at 24. And again I say unto the poor, ye who have not and yet have sufficient, that you remain from day to day. So he's saying, if you, you know you have sufficient if you have enough to live day by day. So you have sufficient, even if you're poor. I mean, all ye who deny, deny the beggar, because ye have not. I would that ye say in your hearts that I give not because I have not, but if I had, I would give. And that's how we ought to, to treat them, right? We should know that, you know, those of us who can't, uh, who cannot, uh, you know, give uh, our substance to the needy. We should say in our hearts, well, if I had money, I would do it. By having that right spirit with you, you're keeping God's commandments and you can continue to have his spirit to be with you. And then we'll look now at uh, verse 29 uh, through 30. He says here, and finally, I, I, you know, he starts talking about different ways to sin. And he says here, and finally, I cannot tell you all the things whereby ye may commit sin. For there are divers ways and means, even so many that I cannot number them. There's many ways that we can sin. But as this much I can tell you, that if you do not watch yourselves and your thoughts and your words and your deeds and observe the commandments of God and continue in the faith of what ye have heard concerning the coming of our Lord, even unto the end of your lives, ye must perish. And now will man remember and perish not. So here he gives you the key to keep the commandments, right? We need to watch our thoughts, right? If, if we only think holy things and think about keeping the commandments, we're not going to sin, right? It's only by entertaining in our minds and in our thoughts things of evil that then we start to dwell on it and then we can start to act it out. But if we cast out that evil thought immediately every time it comes into our mind, 
We, we, we are not in danger of, of breaking any of the commandments. He says, and then by doing that, yeah, then and also your words and your deeds. But it all starts at with the thoughts. If you can, can learn to control your thoughts and only dwell on the good things of God and the commandments, then you don't need to worry about what kind of deeds you're going to have or whether you're going to observe the commandments of God because based on your thoughts, you're, you're going to keep the commandments of God. So now we move to chapter 5. And he says, Now it came to pass that when King Benjamin had thus spoken to his people, he sent among them the desiring to know of his people if they believed the words which he had spoken unto them. So, you know, that's interesting. I mean, here he's given these words from the angel that, that he'd received. And now he wants to know if the people believed them. And two, And they cried with one voice, saying, Yea, we believe all the words which thou hast spoken unto us. And also we know of their surety and truth because of the Spirit of the Lord Omnipotent, means all-powerful, which has wrought a mighty change in us, or in our hearts, that we have no more disposition to do evil, but to do good continually. And it's through the Spirit that we've learned to, uh, and, and we come to believe the truth and to believe the gospel message. If we close off our hearts and don't want to entertain and, and know the truth, God can never reveal the truth to us. But if we humbly come before him and, and want to know whether the words of Christ are true, then he can speak to us through the Spirit that confirms to our souls that these things are true. And therefore you can gain a great testimony and great witness and, and great knowledge of their truthfulness. It says in verse 3, And we ourselves also through the infinite goodness of God and the manifestations of his Spirit have great views of that which is to come. Once you have a testimony of Jesus Christ and the things of the gospel, then you can have the spirit of prophecy that you can see and know and understand the things of the future. And great which is to come, which is expedient. We could prophesy of all things. Once you truly have the spirit with you, have the knowledge of the gospel, then you can prophesy through the spirit of Christ and through the Holy Spirit the things of all things. He says here, and it is the faith which we have had on the things which our king has spoken unto us that has brought uh, us to this great knowledge, whereby we do rejoice with exceedingly great joy. It's great joy, gives you great joy and knowledge to learn for the first time the truth, to learn the truth of the universe, the truth of God, the truth of the gospel message. And we are willing, therefore, right, once you gain this testimony, this willing, this and once you gain this testimony, and once you gain this knowledge, then you want to make a covenant with God, usually through the means of baptism. Here he says about this covenant with God, we are willing to enter into a covenant with our God to do His will and to be obedient to His commandments in all things that He shall command us, all the remainder of our days, that we may not bring upon ourselves a never-ending torment as has been spoken by the angel, that we may not drink out of the cup of the wrath of God. In verse 7, And now because of the covenant which ye have made, ye shall be called the children of Christ, his sons and daughters. So we take upon ourselves the name of Jesus Christ. For behold, this day he hath spiritually begotten you. For ye say that your hearts are changed through faith on his name. Therefore ye are born of him and have become his sons and his daughters. And under this head ye are made free, and there is no other head whereby ye can be made free. There is no other name given whereby salvation cometh. Therefore I would that ye should take upon you the name of Christ, that all that you that have entered into the covenant with God, that ye should be obedient unto the end of your life. And it shall come to pass that whosoever doeth this shall be found at the right hand of God. For he shall know the name by which he is called. For he shall be called the name of Christ. And that's why... God, when he restored the true, the, the true church to the earth after nearly 2,000 years, by divine revelation to the prophet, he said that this church shall be called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, so that we ha are called by the name of, of his Son, by the name of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass that, whoever, whoever, that whosoever shall not take upon him the name of Christ must be called by some other name. Therefore he findeth himself on the left hand of God. If you're not known by the name of Christ, you'd be known by some other name. 
In verse 11, And I would that ye should remember also that this is the name that I said I should give unto you. Remember at the beginning of the speech, he said, I'm going to give you a name as, as I speak to you today. So now at the end of his speech, he's given the name, which is Christ. That I should give unto you that ye should not be blotted out except to be through transgression. Therefore take heed that ye do not transgress, that the name be not blotted out of your hearts. And then in verse 15, Therefore I would that ye should be steadfast, and immovable always abounding in good works, that Christ, the Lord God omnipotent, or all-powerful, may seal you His, that ye may be brought to heaven, that ye may have everlasting salvation and eternal life, through the wisdom and power and justice and mercy of Him who created all things, in heaven and in earth, who is God above all. Amen. And now we'll look at a couple of verses here in verse uh, in chapter six to uh, summarize and to finalize uh, this lesson for this week. Uh, this is King Benjamin now, and it says in verse one, and now King Benjamin thought it was expedient after having finished speaking to the people that he should take the names of all those who had entered into a covenant with God to keep his commandments. And that's why we still do that today. Those who enter into the waters of baptism, their records are kept by the church, just like it's always been done throughout the history of the world. And it came to pass that there was not one soul, except it were little children, but who had entered into the covenant and had taken upon them the name of Christ. That's how powerful the speech was, that all of them entered into a covenant with God to take upon themselves the name of Jesus Christ. This has gone down as one of the most powerful speeches in all of the history of the world, that he was able to convert uh, to Jesus Christ, his whole, his entire people. He is the king. He converted the entire people to make a covenant with Jesus Christ and take upon themselves the name of Jesus Christ uh, upon themselves to keep his commandments, to honor him, and therefore they were entitled to all the blessings of God. When we keep the commandments, we don't just do it because God told us to do it. It's not an obligation to keep the commandments of God. It's an invitation from God to keep the commandments. And if we will take upon ourselves that invitation to accept them into our hearts, to accept them into our lives, to become baptized members of His church, to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, we will have great joy and happiness in this life as we will then continue to keep the commandments and continue to repent of our sins. And the ultimate is to return to live with Him in the presence of the Father forever and ever and ever. And I testify that these things are so glorious, so beyond our comprehension, yet it would be so worth our time and effort to spend all our time to continue to change our lives, to continue to change our conduct, to change our behavior, so that we become the children of Christ and become like Him, so that we can inherit all things that the Father hath prepared for us. And He has done so, as the Scriptures say, from the foundation of the world. He is so anxious to bless us with these things that He planned to prepare and to give us these great gifts from before the world was created. And in conclusion, I would like to uh, once again bear my testimony that these things are true. This is a great book of Scripture, the Book of Mormon uh, with, uh, combined with the Bible. Two witnesses that bear testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the very Son of God, that He is our Lord, our God, and our Redeemer, that if we will just keep His commandments, He will greatly bless us. I testify that He came to the earth in fulfillment of all the prophecies of all the holy prophets since the world began, all the way since Father Adam, and that He, after working out His infinite and eternal sacrifice and atonement on our behalf, he, God raised Him from the dead on that third day. He uh, uh, then witnessed and bore him said, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see that I have. He let many become witnesses of his resurrection so they could go forth and teach the world that God exists, that Jesus is the Christ, that God, that Jesus is the Son of God, that he lives today. And I testify that he still lives today and that he is our Lord and our God and that he desires to bless us with these things and he will if we would just keep his commandments. And I, I, so I want to conclude this week uh, with this uh, testimony and this uh, witness uh, to you, uh, the things that I know 
by having spent years studying the scriptures and years praying to Heavenly Father and gaining this witness and this testimony for myself, independent of any other person on, in this world, that I know these things are true. And I testify those th of these things to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I welcome you to continue to study the scriptures. i anxious that next week again we'll study once again as we continue to work this year through the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. I love all of you. I thank you for your time and, and your effort that you spend to continue to study these words and, and to learn from the scriptures. And I trust that God will continue to bless you as you do so. And, and until next week, Dr. D. Todd Harrison.